What we want to do now is work on a left tail t-test using the value given for the mean of a population. And we're going to deal with it based upon a survey that was conducted about the time that Americans watch television. We call them tv aholics According to the American Time Use Survey, the typical American spends 154 and 8 tenths minutes per day watching television. Do Internet users spend less time each day watching television? Well, a survey of 50 net internet users resulted in a mean time watching television per day of 128 and 7 tenths minutes, with a sample standard deviation of 46 and 5 tenths minutes. We want to conduct the appropriate test to determine if internet users spend less time watching television at a 5% level of significance. Well, step one, we have to determine the null and the alternative hypothesis. Well, looking at the reason for the survey, we want to find out whether or not Internet users spend less time each day watching television. That seems to indicate that the alternative hypothesis should be a less than situation. Do they watch significantly less television? With that in mind, we're going to set up our survey and we're going to put in our symbols and we have the mean time that is given to us and we can write equal to or greater than or equal to the 154 and 8 tenths of a minute. And you know what, I think I'll put this in the next cell so we'll be able to click on this. And the alternative hypothesis says, do they watch significantly less? So is mu going to be less than the 154 and 8 tenths of a minute. Now we want the level of significance. So looking at the information in our paragraph, it says we're using a 5% level of significance. Now, since we're told that 50 people were surveyed, that is a large enough sample to automatically tell us that the distribution is approximately normal. We are told that the average time they watch television is 128 and 7 tenths of a minute, and the sample standard deviation is 46 and 5 tenths of a minute. Now, since we know it is a T distribution because we're using a sample standard deviation and not a population standard deviation, using the T table, we need degrees of freedom, which is equal to N or the 50 minus the 1, so we have 49 degrees of freedom. Now, in order to compute the test statistic, we have almost everything we need. The only thing we need is the standard error or all of the standard deviation of all groups of size 50. So we use the formula that we take the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 50. So now we have the standard deviation, which is about six and a half minutes per day, or maybe almost seven minutes a day. So the test statistic T is going to be equal to the mean for the sample minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation for all groups of size 50. And you notice that it is a negative 3 and 969 thousandths, almost four standard deviations below the mean. So what we really have determined is that the probability that the x bar is less than 128 and 7 tenths of a minute, we are literally looking for the area on the left hand tail. Now, for the t distribution, when you look at the table, you really look for the area under the right hand tail. Because of symmetry, the area under the right hand tail and the area under the left hand tail are exactly the same, so it is symmetric. Therefore, in order to get a p value that would be correct, the small number, we want to be able to take the t distribution dite rt, and in order to accommodate that it's the right tail, we're going to negate the t value to make it a positive number. So we go to our formulas, we go to statistical, we go to our t dot d i s t dot r t, and remember the t is the t val the x is the t value, so we put in the negative to make this a positive number. Notice it's almost four standard deviations above the mean. The degrees of freedom is the forty nine, and now we have the area under the curve that is a little bit more 
than 12, 10,000, 100,000, 118 maybe millions. All right, that gives us the probability of that happening. Now we go to step four, five, where we want to be able to compare our p values, so I press equals, to the given alpha. And in order to make it easier to make that comparison, I'm going to go to the home page over here, and I'm going to expand it. And I'm looking at these particular numbers. And it definitely shows me that the p-value is less than the given alpha. Let's make it look pretty, put it in the middle. Well, now we're able to state the conclusion, and we can say there is sufficient evidence to conclude that Internet users watch significantly less television than non-internet users. And I'm going to correct my spelling, internet. All right, so that looks a little bit better. Therefore, we reject, oh, watch my spelling, reject, thank you, the null hypothesis.